With the new church growing rapidly, beginning on that very first day of Pentecost, people are joining the community, being baptized by the thousands. 3,000 that first day the church is established. Day by day, more and more are being added to the church roles. 5,000 on the day Peter and John are arrested and put in jail just for preaching the gospel. Even people who are on the outside, considered unclean, suspect, heathens are being baptized and brought into this new growing community. And the ones being baptized are receiving gifts of the Spirit, opening their hearts to a new way of living, enjoying the promises given to them and to their children. They are entering a community where you have a place to belong, where everyone knows your name, where you can love and be loved, where support is available in the ups and downs of life, laughter and joy are shared, someone is always there to dry your tears, hold your hand, walk with you while you try to find your way. There are people here to help you learn and to grow, deepen your spiritual life, broaden your worldview, live and live more and more faithfully into your journey on the Jesus way. This is a community where people play together and pray together, where it is safe to be yourself, where you will be hugged and where you will be challenged, where you will be comforted in your pain, where you will be discomforted and pushed if you get too comfortable, too placid, too stagnant. In your baptism, these are the kinds of promises being made to you the kind of community that you are entering. And with each and every baptism, something else is happening. The community is called out once again to examine their, our life and work together, to see if the members of the community truly are living up to the promises coming out of their mouths when one before them is baptized. So with each baptism, we celebrate and we also are called once again to be honest about our lives, honest about what kind of community Fort Street or any other community that's doing a baptism really is. We are being called out once again to repent, turning away from certain behaviors, leaving behind old destructive ways, getting our lives back on track once again. With every baptism, a new opportunity to really live like a child of God reflecting the holy within us. In the new church, baptized members devoted themselves to learning, devoted themselves. In other words, they truly dedicated themselves to ongoing spiritual education and spiritual growth. They were enthusiastic about this aspect of their community's life, committed, zealous, almost fanatical about their own learning, and the spiritual education of their children, and their numbers grew day by day. They devoted themselves to fellowship, to enjoying one another's company, to playing together and having fun, to laughing, to seeking the best in each one, and their numbers grew day by day. They devoted themselves to sharing meals together, and their numbers grew day by day, and they devoted themselves to prayer, and their numbers grew day by day. Now, I'm going to be honest with you, and some of you may get mad, but someone's always mad at me anyway about something, so what the heck. Compared to the many other churches I have been in, this congregation seems to me to have little interest in education, at least education related to spiritual growth. Of course, we will always have Sunday School for Children at the corner of 4th and 3rd. Our Joy Endowment requires this, but do parents actually bring their children on a regular basis? And what about you adults? Of course you're busy, everybody is. Many of you live a long distance away, but where are you when adult classes are being offered on Sunday mornings or other times during the week? For the past several months, the Spiritual Life Committee has been planning classes for all ages to begin this fall. Everyone benefits from ongoing education. They devoted themselves 
to learning, to spiritual growth. And their numbers grew day by day. Then how much do we enjoy being together? Not just in the church building, but during the week. Working together, being in each other's homes, calling on the phone, sending a card, an email, a text. They devoted themselves to fellowship and their numbers grew day by day. Now, I do know that Fort Street folk like to eat. I know that for sure. Whenever there's food after church, lots of people stay. But how do we share meals together? Only on Sundays? Only at the church? Only with people we know and like the most? Do we like each other enough and trust each other enough and enjoy and value each other enough to get together for meals, perhaps in our own homes? Are we ready for family-style meals with all of our open-door guests who are a very vital part of this Fort Street community? They devoted themselves to sharing meals together, and their numbers grew day by day. And what about prayer? I'm expected to pray a lot, but you know what? I also expect you to pray. Do you pray for one another? Do you pray with one another? Do you pray deep and honest prayers gathered together with one another in this community? Deep and honest prayers that make you open and vulnerable to God, open and vulnerable to one another? Is Fort Street a safe enough place for this kind of deep sharing and exposed vulnerability? They devoted themselves to prayer and their numbers grew day by day. Now, what if our numbers do start to grow day by day? Knowing where we are located and the state of religion in our country at this juncture, what will Fort Street look like if we add more to our community? How would this growth even happen anyhow? Where will the people come from? Who will they be? What will they do? And how will they be with us? Does joining our community have to mean being on the active roles of the church? By acceptable Presbyterian standards in accordance with the current Book of Order? Or might you be part of our Fort Street community without your name ever showing up on the active roles? Could somebody possibly make an important contribution to this church without ever making it into official active membership? Is Fort Street a vital, strong, and ever-growing congregation only if the graph of official active church membership on the PCUSA website shows a trend upward every year? Only if more people show up in the pews on Sunday mornings is that the only way we can be a vital, growing, strong congregation? Or could Fort Street perhaps be a vital, strong, growing congregation if we become a truly missional church? If our outreach into the downtown communi community becomes so compellingly important that everyone knows we are here and everyone knows what we are about in order to be a vital, strong, growing, missional church, in order to sustain the kind of outreach that will be required to embody the active, engaged way of living out the gospel necessary to have a missional congregation, to engage seriously in the ongoing ministry of the living Christ without completely burning out and drifting away. There has to be a strong spiritual base from a core group of deeply committed people. Now in sports circles, fitness circles, older adult circles, many circles, we hear a lot these days about developing our core strength. And I've been wondering about the core strength of Fourth Street, about the strength of our spiritual base, about what is required and what will be required for the long haul if Fourth Street will continue as a congregation in downtown Detroit. I've been thinking about what is necessary for Fort Street to be the kind of missional people Christians are expected to be, to do the kind of work required to carry on the ministry of Jesus. 
I'm still thinking about this, but here's what I've come up with for now. We need to open our doors widely and frequently, providing our space for artistic and cultural venues, for social justice events, for hospitality and for hangout spaces for young people, maybe from Wayne County Community College right across the street, Wayne State University, Midtown, and the Katherine Ferguson Academy. We need to identify clear and specific needs not being met in our own neighborhood within a three to five mile radius from this church, decide what particular needs we can address effectively, and develop sustainable programs of support and care to be offered to the neighbors God has given to us. We need to find more ways to be actively involved in the community around us, going to where the people are, building relationships with them, opening ourselves in relationship with them to our own transformation. Will any of these folks, the ones who come to use our building, the ones to whom we offer programs and support, the ones we meet out and about in the neighborhood, will any of these folks ever become active members of Ford Street? I don't know. Does it really matter? Wouldn't we be doing what we are called to do, living into the promises that we make at every baptism, whether they join us in active membership or not? A lot of promises have been made today as we baptize Ollie. Promises to teach others, to be learners ourselves, being transformed all along the way, following the movement of spirit in our lives, to help others know how to live their lives the way Jesus showed us how to live, whether or not they ever become members of this church or even ever become Christian. We've made promises to be together with the people God brings into our lives, enjoying them and sharing with them and helping them in whatever ways we can. To do everything we can to assure that everyone we meet knows to a certainty each and every one is a unique, deeply loved child of God. We've made promises to help each one find their God-given identity, passion, and purpose. I asked a question to Andy and Katie earlier today. Slightly paraphrased, I ask it to you. Are you going to be actively and responsibly involved in the worship and mission of this congregation, serving God and your sisters and brothers? And will you truly and enthusiastically seek communion with the people God brings into your life? Lots and lots of promises made today. Promises, promises, promises. Do they ever come true? Or are they just empty words? False promises. I guess that's up to us. <laughs>